In this video, we're going to go over some advanced practices of using chronometer. So once you get to your diary, let's say you have a blank day here because you didn't fill anything out. And then we go to the next day, which is the 23rd of November, okay? And we have filled some things out. And I want you to just pay attention to these uh, bars down here, okay? This is where you want to be looking. So you can see if I'm curious about where these uh, calories or energy is coming from, this 1,213 calories, I can scroll over that with my mouse and everything will show up from the greatest to the least amount of calories, okay? So you can see that ghee, because it's very dense and the fat calories are double the density of a carbohydrate or protein, they're gonna be at the top. Most of your fats, your fattier foods are gonna be at the top. Okay, so then let's go down and check out the protein. So if I take my mouse and scroll over the blue bar, which is protein, you'll see the descending order of the protein items that I consume that day. So you can see that chicken broth is at the top and then the chicken uh, breast and then eggs and then goat's milk kefir, kefir cheese and then the vegetables, which will be the lowest in protein and so on. Okay, so over here, if you look at this uh, number, 59.6 grams. So I've had 59.6 grams of protein and I need 60. So I'm 86% of the way there, which is why the bar is almost filled up. Okay, so let's look at the carbs. Here are the things that have the most carbs in them. And you can see in descending order here again. And then for fats, here we go again with the ghee at the top and the higher fatty foods. Um, obviously. So that's that. Okay. Now, if you want to add the foods to the next day, so let's assume that most of the time we eat a lot of the same things, right? I'm always going to have, personally, I'm always going to have ghee is one of my preferred fats in my kitchen or coconut oil, sometimes grass fed butter, or, um, you know, it could be any number of things. Um, but for the most part, I use ghee probably more than any other fat in coconut oil. So I eat these fats every day. For As far as a probiotic, I'm probably always going to have kefir or kefir cheese in my fridge, and I'll add it to as a condiment with the meals that I eat during the day. These are things that I buy on a weekly basis at the market. They're usually always either in my fridge or my freezer. And so these are kind of my staples, you could say or at least for periods of time, so you don't have to re-enter all of the foods you eat every single day. I wanna show you a shortcut to how to do that. Uh, but before I do that, I wanna show you that the calories remaining in this day um, are 456 calories, okay? So basically, if you scroll over this, it'll say you're cur you currently have a calorie deficit of 455 calories, 0.6. Okay, so my weight goal is sent at maintain my weight, so this means that I need to eat 455 more calories today on this day. So how am I going to do that? Well, let's just say that I didn't make my calorie target today and I go to sleep and I wake up and I want to make sure that I meet my calorie target tomorrow. And so one of the easiest things to do and the greatest little tools that I want to share with you right now, it's a little secret is to use your chronometer as a planner. Okay. Because over time, Remember that when you do not meet your calorie needs for the day, um, over time, your metabolism is going to slow down. And if you're in weight loss mode, this means that you'll stop losing weight. If you're not in weight loss mode, if you're in weight maintenance mode, this means that you can have all sorts of other issues that can develop because you don't want to deplete your, um, your nutrient intake and you also don't want to deprive yourself of calories, right? So you have a certain amount of calories uh, that you will burn every day just by waking up, moving, breathing, walking, just doing daily, simple, low impact activities. Okay. So your body needs that many calories every day just to maintain its vital functions. And if you don't have enough calories over time, your body's going to steal energy from your vital sources. And so you're going to deplete your natural sources of energy and your chi, your shakti energy, your life force vital energy. Um, so we don't want that to happen, okay? So you have to make sure, it's super important that you make sure you meet that 
calorie budget every day, just like you would with your bank account, right? You don't want to spend more money than you're putting in. Let's look at how we're going to manage this tomorrow. Let's say today I didn't meet my macros and you can see that because of these, these bars are not at hundred percent. We want them all at hundred percent. So I've got 67% of fat intake complete 71% of my carbs, 86% of protein and 73% of my energy or calories. Okay. And that doesn't even include if I added any exercise or activity, which I usually do. So let's just say that I want to add in some Hatha yoga. Okay. I'm going to change this to 90 minutes because I usually do a 90 minute class. So I'll do that. And then let's see what happens to the calories. So now I need to eat even more, right? 681 calories are left in my, in my budget. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to delete that. And the way you delete something is you just scroll over it and click and then hit your delete button on your computer. And then it'll ask you if you want to delete the entry. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go to tomorrow, the next day, whatever that may be for you. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to go up to these three dots on the right hand corner of your food diary. And if you click that, it'll bring in a drop down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say copy previous day. Okay. And there it goes. So I don't have to re-add all these foods. But what I want to do is I want to use this as a planner for what I know, so I know exactly what I need to eat today. Okay. So let's go ahead and start playing with this so we can get all these bars to 100% and see what has to happen. So I need more energy, but we're not going to worry about that. I need more protein. So let's start with the protein foods. If I go into the proteins, I can see that chicken broth and chicken breast and eggs are at the top. So let's go modify these a little bit. I probably wouldn't eat more than two eggs. So let's go to the chicken, two ounces of chicken. If you scroll over the amount, it'll let you change it. So let's see what happens if I eat six ounces of chicken. That gives me more protein than I need, which is a lot of chicken. So I'm glad to hear that. I mean, I'm glad to see that. Okay, let's change this to four ounces. Okay, so that's right about, that's fine. Right about right where I need it to be. So four ounces of chicken. And then let's look at, um, you know, I could also do this. So I could, another variation of this would be to have three ounces of chicken. And then I could change the three, I could eat more, more broth if I wanted to. But that brings me to 98%, so that's great. Um, so you can see that three ounces of chicken is very little. It's about a palm size amount of, of meat. And two eggs is two eggs. So you could see that if you had two eggs in the morning and you had a little bit of chicken on your salad or in your soup later, that's plenty of protein, okay? So again, just to reiterate, this is a moderate protein diet. And for some people, that's going to feel like a low protein diet because most of us have been eating way too much protein for our whole life. So just know that this might take a little bit of a mindset adjustment. The, let's go to the goat's milk kefir. This is the easiest, simplest way for me to get my carbohydrate intake up because it's delicious and I can just pour it in a glass and drink it and it's super satisfying. So let's go check out the kefir cheat or the kefir goat's milk kefir. Here we are. So I created a recipe, which is why it says full recipe. And I'm going to just add another serving of that recipe. So we have three full recipe servings and I'm going to add another one. Okay. So this means I can add another five. I'm pretty sure they're about one ounce was a full recipe. So this is about five ounces and I still don't have quite enough. So let's just leave that there for now and move on to um, fat. Okay. So ghee, again, is the easiest thing to change. I've got three tablespoons and let's just change that to six and see what happens. 101%. Okay. You see that right down here, the green bar, 101% of my fat. So that's great. So when you're making your high fat drink in the morning, you should always have a measuring spoon next to your uh, fat of choice. Okay. So I always have a big spoon next to my coconut oil and ghee, um, on my countertop next to my blender. And whether you're having tea or coffee or, um, just hot water, 
is fine too. And you can mix all sorts of things in with that to, to make a delicious high fat drink. And so six tablespoons is a lot of fat you'll notice, and that's okay. You can build up to that. So this is, this could take you some time, but that's all right. Just so you know, you, you want to get a visual for what this looks like so that you can be sustainable and you don't always have to be adding these foods to your chronometer necessarily. So some people are going to want to do this for months, maybe years. Others are going to kind of get a feel for it and an eye for it. And then maybe you don't need to always be um, entering foods into your chronometer. So it doesn't matter. I just want you to know that it's really important that you meet your macros every day. I want these to all be really close to a hundred. And the problem with, the problem with kefir is, and nuts and seeds is that they have, they have fats, they have protein, but they also have some carbs. So sometimes it gets a little tricky, which is why I want you to kind of play with this as a planner so that you'll have a good reference point for how much you need to be eating every day. This is going to be very different if you're in weight loss mode, because remember that you will not be eating this much fat in weight loss mode because you'll be grabbing, your metabolism will be grabbing that fat from your own body fat stores. Okay. So once you reach your goal weight, you're going to double roughly the amount of fat that you're eating. So let's go back to the kefir milk here. Let's bump that up. Okay, we're really close. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with 110. If you're 10% either way on your macros, that's great. I, I think that's awesome. So aim for 100% and get as close as you can, 10% either way, and you're good. Let's just add in some exercise just for fun. Let's do yoga. 90 minutes is what I did this morning. So now again, I can eat a little bit more. So, and I have a little bit more carbs to eat, not a whole lot more energy or calories. So this might throw me over the edge, but let's just play with this for a second. I'm going to add red wine. Say I want to have a glass of red wine with my dinner. I'm just going to say regular red wine, one cup. And let's see what happens to that. Okay. So great. There we have it. This is my target day of getting all my macros met. So with these things in my fridge, I know I can do this tomorrow just by taking a glance. Maybe I'll do a screenshot of this page and I'll save it on my phone and I can look at that until I don't need to look at it anymore. Okay. So I want you to get really comfortable with this process so that you make sure you're meeting your macros every day and you can start using chronometer as a planner. Okay, that's the whole message I want to get across to you today in this video is that it's really going to become second nature. It's going to become very easy once you master this tool. And so use it and play with it and get really comfortable with it.